Sacred texts are fundamental to the lives of billions of people around the world. Very little of biblical history as depicted in the Old Testament or Hebrew Bible has been verified through the archaeological record. Yet it's precisely this opportunity that exists as archaeologists armed with new digital technologies try to establish synchronisms, references in a sacred text that parallel historical accounts as reflected in artifacts, inscriptions, and other parts of the archaeological record. Case in point, historical evidence of King Solomon is scarce. Excavations at Hatzor, Megiddo, and Gezer have uncovered structures that some archaeologists date to Solomon's reign. But that conclusion is not definitive because it is believed these sites were later destroyed by an invasionary force of Egyptian pharaoh Shishak I. While scholars argue about the exact year and the precise routes that Shishak's forces took, they agree that the military campaign took place during the 10th century BCE, the most hotly debated period in biblical archaeology today. The most detailed evidence of Shishak's attacks across Palestine is visible on the excavated ruins of the Great Temple of Amun at Karnak in the ancient city of Thebes, modern-day Luxor in Egypt. Here on an outer wall is a monument to Shishak and his victories. Depicting the pharaoh himself, the carved stones today feature roughly 80 name rings of towns and settlements of what appear to have been at one time as many as 180 rings. Most researchers now agree that this relief scene represents a topographical list, with each ring the name of a place subjugated by Shishak or his forces commemorating his invasion of Palestine in the early 10th century BCE. The Palestinian topographical names still preserved in Karnak include a number of well-known current sites, Gaza, Gezer, Tirza, Jezreel, and Megiddo in the north. As such, this facade is a treasure trove, helping archaeologists understand the impact of the Egyptian state on societies in the southern Levant nearly a thousand years before Christianity and over 1,600 years before Islam was born. As part of their effort to develop a digital archaeology atlas of the Holy Land, researchers at UC San Diego's Center of Interdisciplinary Science for Art, Architecture and Archaeology are using the latest archaeological data mining and visualization tools to postulate the direction and significance of Shishak's campaign based on the name rings at Karnak and the findings at excavated sites in Israel and Jordan with layers dating back to the biblical period. The story begins here in Tanis on the Nile Delta. This temple town was home to Shishak and successor pharaohs of Egypt's 22nd dynasty and remained so for roughly 200 years. As reconstructed by Egyptologist Kenneth Kitchen, the pharaoh probably led the advance along the Via Maris, the way of the sea, all the way to Gaza along the North Sinai coast. Before spearheading his main forces advance north to Megiddo, the pharaoh had dispatched at least three large task forces, or as Professor Kitchen called them, flying columns to the south of the country to subdue fortified sites in the Negev Desert and the Wadi Araba Rift Valley that separates modern Israel and Jordan. The archaeological record, including recent finds by researchers from the University of California, San Diego, and Jordan's Department of Antiquities, provides major clues to the route taken by forces along the middle prong of the northern Negev offensive. The force swept eastward to Sharuhen, a community listed on the temple at Karnak. From there, the Egyptians followed the Wadi Gaza east to the fortress town of Beersheba, then on to Malhata and Arad. There is evidence the force continued on to attack the fortress at Hatseva, some 50 kilometers south of the Dead Sea, a critical outpost because it permitted control of the overland Arabian trade route, including the copper trade with Edom located across the Wadi Araba Valley. It is there, traveling east from Hatseva, just 18 kilometers, that UC San Diego archaeologist Tom Levy and Jordanian archaeologist Dr. Mohammed Najjar are excavating Hilbat and Nahas, a site rich in copper ore in Jordan's Fainan region, the biblical Edom. The excavations have unearthed the largest Iron Age copper production center in the southern Levant. More than 24 acres in size, the site is covered in thousands of tons of ancient black metallurgical slag. To our surprise, high-precision radiocarbon dating at Hilbat and Nahas 
show that copper metal production was carried out some 200 to 300 years earlier than scholars believed until recently. This brings the occupation of the site into the orbit of the 10th and 9th centuries BCE, the time of David, Solomon, Rehoboam, Jeroboam, and Shishak. Recent finds of Egyptian artifacts at Hibat and Nahas lend credence to the excavator's new theory that the massive copper production center may have been a target of Shishak's army, given that Hibat and Nahas is just a day's journey from Hatseva, one of the neighboring sites probably destroyed by Shishak. To ensure the most accurate data collection, UC San Diego archaeologists record all data in 3D with X, Y, and Z coordinates. Z is for elevation, collected with total stations and global positioning systems. This enables researchers to control precisely the spatial location of architecture, artifacts, and other discoveries. We've created one of the first completely digital-based recording systems for archaeological research. Digital photographs are taken of ancient buildings discovered in an excavation, for instance, and downloaded into the computer where they can be accurately drawn with a geographic information system, or GIS. Researchers can then reconstruct the site on their laptop computers in the field on a daily basis or back at home in California. The UCSD Center is using digital tools to analyze all sorts of data, from regional settlement patterns to small artifacts. The new excavations at Hebat and Nahas are providing exciting new data for examining theories concerning the role of metal production on the rise of the biblical kingdom of Edom, as well as Shishak's campaign. Excavating a six-meter deep mound of ancient metallurgical debris in Area M at the site, that's over 20 feet deep, UCSD and Jordanian archaeologists, for the first time, have exposed a complete record of Iron Age metal production in the region. During the course of our excavations in the Area M building, several Egyptian artifacts were discovered on the floor that may relate to Shishak's campaign or trade between Jordan and Egypt around that time. These include a scarab originating from the eastern delta in Egypt, possibly from Tanis, where they may have been produced during the reign of Shishak and his predecessor in the early to mid-10th century BCE. Another important find, an Aegis amulet may defiance. Such amulets are primarily linked to the goddess Mut, and since there was a Mut temple in Pharaoh Shishak's capital city of Tanis, this amulet may also have originated from this region. These artifacts clearly place the building at Hibat and Nahas in the time frame and historical context of Shishak's three-pronged attack across the Negev. We excavated the large slag mound at Hibat and Nahas, presumably slag and other debris from the copper factory, and pinpointed the location of 22 radiocarbon samples. Those samples were then dated at the Oxford Radiocarbon Accelerator Unit by doctors Tom Hyam and Christopher Bronk Ramsey. The excavations in the slag mound revealed only three major strata through this massive accumulation of ancient metallurgical debris. By applying Bayesian statistics to the calibrated radiocarbon dates, it is possible to model the sequence of events in this part of the site. The highest probability for the earliest point in time when smelting may have been carried out at this earliest location, stratum 3, is put at 950 BCE. Stratum 3 itself spans between 5 and 135 years, with a highest probability associated with a briefer period of only 40 years. In these early phases at the site, over 3 meters of metallurgical smelting debris may have been deposited in less than 50 years. At the end of Stratum 3, the slag mound was truncated and the four-room building was constructed in Stratum 2. This period dates from as early as 910 to as late as 800 BCE, with the highest probability that the end of the Stratum 2 occupation in this area came in 840 BCE. In other words, the excavations at Hibad and Nahas show that there was a major disruption of the early 10th century BCE copper industry at the site between stratum 3 and stratum 2, around shortly before 910 BCE. This raises the tantalizing question, could this disruption be related to the military campaign of Shishak's troops that crossed the Negev Desert into the Wadi Araba Valley? 
The force reached Hatseva, and it was only a day's journey further east to the metal production center at Chebat in Nahas. The period of disruption in metal production appears to coincide with Shishak's reign from circa 945 to 924 BCE, and it is consistent with the fifth year of the reign of Judah's King Rehoboam, 926 BCE, when most scholars believe Shishak's military campaign in Palestine began. Prior to the excavations by UC San Diego and Jordanian archaeologists in the Fainan district, researchers assume that the Iron Age only began in this part of Jordan in the 6th or at the earliest 7th century BCE. This was based on the fact that most Iron Age excavations had taken place at sites on the highlands of Edom, sites such as Busera, assumed capital of biblical Edom, and no evidence of occupation in the 10th or 9th century BCE had been found there. As a result, it has been believed that activities mentioned in the Bible of David, Solomon, Hadad, son of the king of Edom, or even Pharaoh Shishak, regarding the early Iron Age history of Edom, might be pure myth. Those assumptions ignored the important copper ore district of Fainan in the lowlands of Edom, now, thanks to a mix of traditional and digital archaeology methods and high-precision radiocarbon dating, we can refute the earlier assumptions. And by tracking the archaeological evidence of Shishak's military campaigns north to Megiddo and east to Hatseva, and using it as a touchstone for analyzing the biblical citations about Shishak, a new understanding emerges about this period and the role Shishak may have played in the disruption or even devastation of the largest known Iron Age copper factory in the eastern Mediterranean. As such, the story of Shishak's campaign in Palestine underscores the need for more interdisciplinary science and technology-based research in the investigation of the relationship between the Bible and history, indeed between all sacred texts and the archaeological record.